This is the start of a major week of international energy discussions in the U.S. A big U.N. summit begins tomorrow. The National Energy Summit kicks off Wednesday here in D.C. The G20 summit begins on Thursday in Pittsburgh. Today, about 1,500 people are gathering in D.C. for Grid Week 2009, an annual discussion about the latest in smart grid technology. Clean Skies' Tyler Suters was there for day one and a keynote address from Energy Secretary Stephen Chu. The smart grid is certainly a familiar topic for Stephen Chu. I heard him discussing it at a Nehru conference back in February. That was his first public speech as Energy Secretary. As he did then, Chu again touted the promise of energy storage progress and research that is underway at the Bonneville Power Authority. But today he also highlighted what he called the three major challenges that he sees to smart grid development. Those are standards, transmission, and data sharing. We're in the process of trying to get phasers installed that will give real-time readout of the phase of the electricity supplies. We also need that that phase information be distributed to all the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, there's a little bit of a hurdle. Many utility companies are reluctant to give phaser information to other companies. Uh, but in this, going looking forward in the smart grid, I hope we can get over that little bump because it's the real-time coordination at the 1 60th of a cycle time speed that we will really need in order to prevent the blackouts, in order to begin to deal with the porting of energy back and forth, especially as we go to higher renewables. In the United States today, we're less than 3 percent wind and solar generation. At less than 3 percent, and we throw some of that power away, we don't care about spinning reserves, it doesn't really matter, but as you saw from the BPA, which is the BPA is now 20 percent generation capacity in wind, those things really begin to matter. Secretary Chu also addressed the challenge of electric transportation, and he asked the question, is the grid ready for plug-in hybrids? Well, he answered himself, saying the simple answer is no, if the goal is 30 to 50 percent deployment of those vehicles. He says a more realistic expectation is a market penetration of one million cars on the road over the next three to four years. A million cars is one-tenth of one percent of the cars in North America. That's the denominator. And a million is about the number of Priuses now on the road. So uh, to get significant market penetration, we do have to go a long way. but. Um, let me just say that uh, if you get significant market penetration, uh, especially in the electric vehicles, which will require 50 kilowatt hour batteries, you can, you can really, this is a lot of really high class distributed storage. And it, it has always been my goal to do energy arbitrage with a plug-in vehicle. So I can buy electricity from a power company at night when it's maybe they'll charge me six, eight cents a kilowatt hour. I can sell it back in the hot summer afternoon where maybe I can get back 20 cents so they can sell it at 40 cents or 50 cents a kilowatt hour. And it's the only time in my life where I'm pretty sure I can buy low, sell high. Some of the other grid-related topics that Chu sees on the horizon that he mentioned were better cybersecurity, an extra high voltage overlay for transmission, and also polygen for generation, something he calls a huge investment, but one that could perhaps have a tremendous return. And coming up tomorrow morning, you'll see what the secretary had to say after his speech at Grid Week, including his latest progress update on Chinese transmission technology, and also the emphasis that he sees on the post-Copenhagen process. That's all coming up on tomorrow morning's edition of the Energy Report. Susan.